I decided to do a uh, short video of some of the changes I made to the uh, Exceed RC Mini 50 millimeter MiG-15 ducted fan. I bought the receiver ready version um, from Exceed RC, the ARF, and um, first time I tried it, really didn't fly that well. Um, really, I couldn't uh, launch it properly with a hand toss. And I'll show you a video here. You can see the first launch, what happened. Um, it's a nice looking airplane. I made a lot of modifications to it. Um, I'm gonna go over each one of these modifications that I think is uh, necessary to get this uh, flying properly. So I've got a little sheet in front of me here so I don't forget anything. I added 1 8 inch dowel rods um, to the front of the airplane for structural support. They're along each side and a little short one on the top and a slightly longer one on the bottom. Just your typical eighth inch dowel rod to add some rigidity to the front. To do that I took off this plastic cap which had to be removed anyways because it wasn't properly glued. Um, all the surfaces that you're going to be gluing in this airplane, make sure that you remove the paint that is out of the silver paint or the red paint because it will not hold if you don't. The paint is barely on the EPO foam. So that's very important to do on everything, especially on the control surfaces. Make sure you remove that paint before you use a instant glue on there. Um, all the connections, put blue Loctite on because they will come loose if you don't. It's on the elevators as well as on the ailerons. Um, to get this to fly a little better, I added five millimeters of balsa wood to the elevator area right here. That increased it in, in its length, which changes the profile of the actual elevator itself and uh, gives a little more stability. It allows you to flare properly when you're coming into landing. You don't have to really crash land, it'll come in, it'll flare quite nicely. Um, in terms of launching it, I was having trouble launching it because I was holding it pretty much in the center of balance and it wasn't working, the plane was stalling. So I realized that you need to throw this um, in a downward direction so that it doesn't stall. So to make that real easy, I just cut a little circle area in the back of the wing right here, put a little foam, and that's where you put your thumb and your forefinger and it's very easy to throw now. You're kind of forced to throw it in the downward direction. And you'll see in the video that works really, really well. Um, another thing to change is on the elevator, the control rods, they uh, need some support right at the end here. As you can see, I added a little piece of balsa right here and glued that on. If you don't do that, the elevator stabilizer will be really not efficient. It'll have a lot of slop in there and you don't want that for something that's going this fast. Um, as you can see I removed the bombs. Um, they're kind of useless. They're extra drag. It's kind of a poor design because they will just break off constantly even if you shorten the length of them. So I just don't have them on the airplane anymore. And um, going back to the hinges, I replaced all the hinges. I cut the foam because the foam hinge is useless. It will break off immediately. So what I used is those, uh, I think they're Dubro brand, uh, they're uh, fiberglass, thin fiberglass hinges that you can instant glue on. That's what I use for that. So you want to do that on your ailerons and you want to do that on your elevator also. So, so uh, that gives you a lot of uh, strength in the, in the hinge uh, compared to what is there because it will come off. Um, in terms of uh, balancing this model, they, they say to balance it at uh, 95 millimeters from the front of the wing back. And I find that's pretty close, but what I work, found that works best is uh, 90 millimeters, not uh, 95, I went 90 millimeters, so you, which adds some nose weight to it. And by putting these dowels, it pretty much will add the proper weight. What I ended up doing is adding a 
four tenths of an ounce piece of lead in the front here on the bottom, not the top, but on the bottom right here. So the four tenths ounce piece of lead plus the dowels that you add that I mentioned will get the balance right at 90 millimeters. And that flies really good at 90 millimeter. Um, another thing you have to consider is cooling, the battery cooling. The battery when I first flew this a couple times got really hot. So what I did is, you probably won't be able to see it, but I put two holes the size of a pencil on the left and on the right here, and they go up on a slight angle, and they come into the battery compartment. And they're actually coming over here left and the right. They're slightly above the battery. And I'd also channeled down a little bit of the foam around the left and right of the battery to get some additional cooling effect. And the most important thing for cooling in conjunction with that is on the actual um, canopy, I actually cut out the last back window. And uh, you can see it's cut on the bottom also right here. And what that does is that gives it a, a vent escape. It creates a vacuum with the air going over there. And it'll extrude, extract some of that uh, excess battery heat. Very important if you're gonna not damage your batteries. And also um, the battery, to get it to fit properly, it doesn't really quite fit properly. I cut the battery compartment out that they had notched out, so I removed the floor and I added balsa on the bottom of the floor under the fuselage here. And what that did is that gave me an additional about half of an inch almost of distance, which is increasing the uh, effective air around the battery, which will then allow it to cool, especially with these intake ducts and the exhaust port that I talked about on the canopy. Um, another common thing that people are changing on this plane is the, uh, the motor controller uh, is put right back here. So I moved it to the right and I just put it vertically right against the foam with the flat cooling plate towards the, the center of the uh, fuselage. And that's pretty easy to do. I, I, didn't, I wouldn't recommend moving it back like some people have, have suggested. Just put it to the side right here. And it'll hold in place to put a little dab of instant glue or something on there. And that puts it right in the airflow. Now my receiver is then right in the center right here. If you can see that. Um, let's see, let me look at my list here. What else do I can I talk about? Uh, oh yeah, the uh, going back to another modification I made the uh, brushless motor and the ducted fan unit I took apart and I used a blue Loctite on all the screws on there. Also it's very uh, tight dimension to the outer um, circular plastic piece of the ducted fan and I was noticing that as I tried to tighten the bottom screws of the ducted fan compartment the ducted fan was stalling. So what I did is I removed about four tenths of a millimeter, three tenths of a millimeter from all the rotors. I reduced the diameter about three tenths of a millimeter. And uh, very carefully, very minimally, and that gave me enough clearance on the outer shroud so that it wouldn't hit anymore so that I can effectively use the cover on here. Uh, while you're down there and with, with on the motor, you might want to put a little lubrication oil on the outer and inner bushings of the ducted fan also, since you already have it open. Um, so that's all the modifications that I made to uh, the CRC 50 millimeter ducted fan, almost ready to fly. Um, after making these changes, it actually flies great, flies very fast. I get about six, seven minutes of flight. Um, I'm using a uh, Sky LiPo 800 milliamp hour battery, which is on their other website, uh, hobbyparts.com. And uh, oh, one other thing is uh, when I first test flew it, I needed a lot of right aileron, and I noticed afterwards that one of the wings had a slight warp in it. So make sure you check your wings as you're building it, and if there's any kind of warp there, just counter bend the foam, put a little, apply a little hair dryer heat or something, and you can get rid of that warp pretty easily. Um, other than that, all of these changes, it seems like a lot of changes, but um, you know it's a relatively inexpensive airplane. You make these changes to it, and it'll be a good flying airplane at that point. So thanks for watching.